Good afternoon, people. Watch them at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you and I are whosoever's, believe, you and I believe, in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now how do you do this? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you accept Christ as Savior, the moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready, which again is about to happen at any time, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you will not and cannot lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend, and the Holy Spirit will change you. That, my friend, is the gospel. That's how we're saved. That's how we're kept saved. And that's why we're saved. This article came in this morning, just now. Now, something is happening right now, and RT um, is developing. So, it says that Putin signed a countermeasure to oil price cap. So the move is in response to a Western coalition price limit on Russian seaborne oil exports. Um, he signed a, dec a decree in response to the Western price cap on the country's oil experts, exports. So that's all there is right now. This is a developing story. It was breaking. So um, I'll look into it later to see what's going on. But this came in off of war news like five minutes ago. And it says that hundreds of T-72 and T-90 tanks are moving toward Kharkiv and Donbass. Russia's ultimatum to Kiev is saying, accept the terms for your own good. Otherwise... Um, hold on, let me get rid of all these. It says here, the Russian foreign minister, uh, Sergei Lavrov, sent a telegram. And again, this just came out five minutes ago. Sent a telegram to Kiev shortly before the start of a large-scale Russian attack, stressing that either Kiev will implement Moscow's claims or the issue will be resolved by the Russian army. We should note that this is perhaps Russia's last ultimatum to Ukraine. So it says large military uh, flanix consisting of T-72 tanks were spotted on the border with Kharkiv at the same time at least 50 new T-90 tanks entered the Lugansk region near the town of, what, Savadovo? A large Russian Belarusian army convoy was also spotted moving toward the town of uh, Malarta, which is 20 miles from the border with Poland and Ukraine. Russia is preparing a large-scale attack as we speak right now. Um, Moscow's proposal for the demilitarization and the denazification of Ukraine are known in Kiev and it is up to the Ukrainian authorities to implement them. Otherwise, the issue will be resolved by the Russian army. And this is from the Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Our proposals to demilitarize and denazify the territories controlled by the Ukrainian regime eliminate threats to Russia's security emanating from them, including our new territories, are well known to the enemy. 
he said, according to the Russian news agencies. The point is simple. Apply them for your own good. Otherwise, the issue will be determined by the Russian army. Pointing out that the ball is in Kiev and Washington's court. Kiev and Washington. If they want to see an end to these hostilities. This week is going to be a doozy. I can I can sense it now. Um, there's videos here of tanks. So it says that in addition, the top Russian diplomat argued that it is impossible for Russia to have normal talks with the U.S. while sleepy, creepy, whatever you want to call him, is in the office or is resident. That's what they're saying. Having a normal conversation with the this administration, which has set the goal of achieve, achieving a strategic defeat of, of our country as one of its goals, is objectively impossible. I thought he was going to say because, frankly, he's won fry short of a Happy Meal, but no. He didn't say that. But yet it is impossible <laughs> to reason with someone like that. I mean, seriously. Lavrov noted, uh, he argued, noting that Washington's no, confrontational anti-Russian course continues to have a sharper character. If all this is being set up right now, God only knows what the next 24 to 48 hours is going to bring. Because there is videos of convoys of tanks that's being shown off right now. I mean, loads of tanks. It says Russian-U.S. relations are in a truly deplorable state and they have almost come to a standstill because of Washington. We consistently explain to the Americans that it is not in our style to deliberately undermine intergovernmental relations, the Russian foreign minister emphasized. Um, in fact, Lavrov argued that the attitude of the West, which aims at the absolute isolation of Russia is extremely dangerous and carries the risk of a direct conflict between nuclear powers. The West is talking nonstop with irresponsible speculation that Russia is allegedly on the brink of using nuclear weapons against Ukraine. The political attitude of the West, which aims at the absolute isolation of Russia, is extremely dangerous. It carries the risk of a direct conflict between nuclear powers. Lavrov said, noting that a nuclear war would have no winners and should never be launched. As he says, the U.S. and NATO want to crush Russia on the battlefield in order to destroy it afterwards. The actions of the West and the puppet Zelensky confirm the global character of the Ukrainian crisis. It is no secret that the strategic goal of the U.S. and NATO allies is to beat Russia on the battlefield in order to weaken and destroy us. Our adversaries will do anything to achieve this goal, Lavrov said, noting that the one who would benefit both economically and strategically from a major conflict is the U.S. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to say, I hate to say it, he's right. He's right. Washington is also solving a key geopolitical goal to break the traditional ties between Russia and Europe and make its European satellites even more dependent on it. Let me repeat that. Washington is also solving a key geopolitical goal to break the traditional ties between Russia and Europe and make its European satellites 
even more dependent on it. Now, let me give you a hint about something. Think back. Say, hmm, I'm, I'll be 57 years old Friday. I'll be 57 years old Friday. Now think back. 40 years ago. This is why I believe a lot of people had a hard time dealing with the second coming of Jesus Christ. How is it that it's stated in the Bible that every eye will see the second coming of Jesus Christ? Every eye will see the two witnesses being assassinated. How is it that every I will see this because of TV and satellite. We didn't have this 50 years ago. We got it now. Technology and knowledge has increased a million fold. You tell somebody this back 50 years ago, even 40 years ago, they'd be like, how is everybody going to see this? They looked at this in the Bible as to say, I don't know how this is possible. It's very possible now. Every eye will see the second coming of Christ, but only those who are saved will be in the rapture. We're getting ready to get out of here. And I've said it before. I will say it again. I do not believe. I do not believe we're going to make it past this whole year. I do believe in my heart of hearts that this, this is truly the last holiday for the Christian who is waiting and watching for Christ in the rapture. I do believe that. I do believe it's just a matter of time now. There is no turning back. Um, on this nuclear rhetoric. Russia has put it out there, and if Russia don't do what they say they're going to do, they're going to look weak. The U.S. already looks weak. The U.S. looks quite pathetic right now. But the only thing that's holding a nuclear battle back is the church. The church has got to be gone soon. You can argue with me until the cows come home. I really don't care. I don't really care who argues with me about that. But it's written in the Bible. He that letteth will let until he is let out, until he is gone. I'm paraphrasing, but you get it. Look at 2 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians first. Because the rapture is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians. And then we go over into 2 Thessalonians where, well, you know, you know. So, yeah, I believe we're going to be gone soon. Now, the rapture is only for those who are saved. Period. The rapture is only for those who are saved, who have put their faith and trust in Christ Jesus. If you're not saved, if you haven't made Christ your savior, if you're not saved, you're not going in the rapture. That's the truth. That's black and white. That's, that's the Bible. Because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, those who are alive, those who are dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain, those of us in Christ who are alive and remain will be caught up with Christ in the air. The dead in Christ has to go first because they're further down. So I'm just saying, they got to come up first. And then we will follow them. Again, the rapture is for those who are saved. I don't know why I said this, but it's a reason. There is a reason. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, you're not going in the rapture. Regardless of what your opinion about the rapture is, you have to be saved in Christ. 
Just saying. I will be back later. I'm going to link this article in the description box, and I will be on the lookout for that oil cap thing about Putin that he signed a decree to countermeasure the oil price cap. So that hasn't come out yet, but I will keep you in the loop. And until then, I'll be back later. Thank you.